Good evening, everyone. Thanks for coming to tonight's uh, virtual tour and talk for the exhibition of Place and Space, featuring uh, the work of Brian Botwell and Emily Elliott. The exhibition is on through January 29th, and uh, you can come down to see it, and you can also see everything on our website. We are recording tonight's talk, and we'll edit and put it on our uh, YouTube channel so you can see it after the fact or send it to uh, someone who may have missed it. So I'm going to uh, spotlight Tina's screen here. And I thought uh, we'll, we should um, begin by asking each artist to speak a little bit about themselves. Um, and uh, so um, my recent history is that I moved from Philadelphia last uh, in October uh, or September 21, 19, or 2021, and um, uh, to um, uh, Look after my mom for a while uh, after uh, after and um, so I left my uh, position at the academy where I was the um, where I was the uh, uh, I worked in the uh, with the students in the student galleries and then for a while worked at the museum with um, the preparators and um, for that I had uh, for that I had uh, I got a certificate uh, from. Uh, um, at the, uh, from 2000, 2004 at, um, uh, at the Academy. And, uh, then before that I had, uh, um, some years in the Navy and, um, um, all that stuff. And, uh, I, I grew up in Erie, which is, uh, again, where I moved back to. And, um, I guess, as far as my uh, art career, I uh, took an interest in, um, well, I just, I, I took an interest in painting and um, my recent uh, work is uh, kind of veered towards uh, abstract and um, kind of uh, being my issues of working with the surface and working with the color. Um, and value and trying to create kind of a sensation, uh, which I guess all painting is, but that's my thing. So that's my spiel. Emily? All right, let me, uh... hey, Emily. Hello. <clears throat> um, I also went to the Academy to PAFA for the graduate program, and I did that between 2013 and 2015, and that's how mostly I know Brian. Um, I worked a lot with him in those student galleries that he was talking about, installing, preparing. Um, and still, since then, I'm still doing that similar line of work, um, installing in galleries, art handling, preparing. Um, my mo work is pretty heavily sculptural, but um, used, to be, used to be more painterly, but not within the last few years, but they're kind of uh, assemblages, they rely on a printmaking process that uses plaster. Um, and they use a lot of natural material, sticks and stones and dirt, and just kind of natural earthy residue, um, some minerals and dry pigments at times. So I guess we could, uh, you know, focus on the, the show itself. Um, so Emily, your statement is uh, quite interesting where it references feeling and then atmospheric and celestial happenings. Can you speak about that a little bit? Yeah, um, I feel like my work is pretty introspective and solitary, which is how I feel as a person. Um, and so a lot of these come from just being in nature outside not entirely by myself, oftentimes with my twin sister, but that's as pretty pretty much solo as 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 anything, um, two two and one. So a lot of them come from just feelings that of of being in nature and exploring and and hiking and camping and backpacking and these sorts of things. And the things that I'm drawn to feel to me like um, 
moods or emotions of, of the atmosphere and of these environments that I kind of want to make permanent. I want to be able to hold on to those kinds of feelings and sensations longer. And they often feel like, like moods and personalities to me. So I, I think that my, the things that I make are trying to capture those a little bit because a lot of that stuff is so ethereal and fleeting and, and in the moment and my own studio life wants to hold on to that a bit longer. And you use a, quite an array of material. Yes, they, they pretty much all have an element of that plaster process. Um, <clears throat> and I make a lot of those plaster plates. Sometimes they've got some sparkle or some kind of magic and other times not at all. Um, so I make a lot of that stuff. And then a lot of times my studio process just looks like shuffling things and restacking and putting things in relationship to each other. And then other elements will come in like you see sticks in this one or sometimes mechanical processes to kind of relay onto it because in that one there, um, that little twig on the white piece is kind of acting as a button and is tying one piece to the other. Um, and so sometimes they, they feel a little bit physically playful about mechanics and um, potential energy and kinetic energy, things like that. But they also the material is important to me. I want it to have a, a delicacy, but also, um, I guess, an economy of, of having some kind of punch or sparkle about it while still be being delicate. Thank you. Okay. Brian, do you want to speak a little bit about your painting? process. It seems like your color might have muted somewhat from the last show you had. I, I think yes, because I, 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 maybe I was painting in a brighter room. I don't know. Yeah, well, um, a... <laughs> so then it didn't have to be as vibrant. Um, and I, and also, I guess when I was unpacking, there was just certain, these were the colors, the, a lot of the paint that I uh, came across and started using. Um, it was, it's interesting how Emily said that trying to, um, uh, how elusive, you're trying to capture something and it's elusive. And I guess, I, I'm finding this, I, I find the same thing, but I guess I like stubbornly try to um, keep trying to draw it back in to the painting by just applying, you know, additional layers of color in order to get a certain depth or a certain richness or find a certain uh, color or value um, in and to, to try to So, so that, that 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 feeling won't escape, I guess, so that it's still there when you when you when I look at the painting. Um, um, and I, I think also, uh, like I was saying before, I was talking to Anthony uh, before this started, um, just to get out of the house and get away and clear my head, I uh, I kind of, uh, it's kind of a, a small a suburban small town kind of thing and so um, there's a lot more uh, nature or trees and there's even a golf course and then uh, Lake Erie's like a quarter mile away I can walk down a road and catch a glimpse of the lake and so it's kind of uh, overwhelming sometimes the the nature and animals and things. And then I bring that back uh, to the painting and I think it's affected, um, I think that's affected like the, the color sense and things. I mean, there's still like in this painting, oh, it's a lot of greens from the grasses and the leaves and the trees and the gray of the stones and things. But then I had to put in some red and purple to kind of, I don't know, 
sent hold it or something, I guess. So. And uh, obviously, when you look at all my paintings, um, I, I've been uh, influenced by uh, by Demon Corn and um, um, just that kind of like a certain amount of uh, geometry. My my dad was a geometry teacher, so that kind of has come into play. I guess is the working with certain shapes and and um, Things. So should we look at these as landscapes? Um, well, this one is like an interior, and but I would say most of them are landscapes. This is more of an interior. I was, um, this was <laughs> kind of started out more like it was uh, like one of those uh, um, early Renaissance nor, um, kind of uh, devotional paintings with the mother and child and things and kind of went another direction, but that's kind of the feeling I was trying to get there is um, uh, kind of like an interior on that one. Um, Yeah, that one, like I was bound and determined to try to make certain of those colors go together. I don't know how successful I was, but magenta, I had to use magenta. Um, so you're the first that small painting at the beginning of the show, that's like a, that's like a golf course painting. Um, and the, uh, I think, yeah, well, as we go here, This one here is probably more of like a, almost like a still life, I think. I was just trying to um, I, things kind of kept escaping me on this and then I ended up with um, that arrangement of shapes and colors. Brian, there's a question for you. Are you using a glaze or a scumble process? It's, um, it, it's glaze is the, um, is, uh, is that final thing. Scumble it sometimes if I have to kind of, something starts again, getting out of, like it's out of kind of control, then, um, then I'll scumble something and then it's generally the last thing is a is a, a a wash a glaze of of uh, color. And this is um, yeah. Th this was a this painting happened. Well, this is I guess this was the largest one that I I sent in and. Um, I'm this one happened really fast. And uh, so is it straight oil paint? It, they have a sheen to them that. Uh, yeah, it's it's oil paint, but then I I just I have uh, I like a, a medium like a, a linseed oil and 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 uh, and thinner medium okay. and kind of to get it at the consistency that to, to that I like to work with. So just the usual oil painting yeah. gear. Yeah. So Emily, uh, can you talk a little bit about this one? It's a little bit different. Yes. Um... That one is, is pretty brand new, but it has, it's had elements that have been trying to kick around together for a long time. 
of um I originally had that little wire basket with a rock on it hanging <clears throat> from a horsehair from that stick for a long time, just looking at it. And then um, kind of using that, that Y-shaped stick as, as an anchor point and running, running that twine through the, all the way through that stick happened kind of recently. And then just those other additional elements kind of, kind of just came together, but that one is wanting to use more kind of mechanical fasteners and uh, <clears throat> some kinetic kinetic energy potential. <coughs> anyway, can I ask, how do you find, like, like is potentially everything something that you can use in, in one of these creations or and like, do you just have like a big kind of an assort assortment? Like in Joseph Cornell, like in his house, they said that, you know, he just had like box of shells and a box of uh, like all these like different aspects that then he would combine into his art. And, and because then you're also dealing with the printmaking, right? I mean, Yeah, um, for the natural bits, I do have quite a lot of it, but I always want to be kind of discreet about it. I don't want to have just tons of stuff, um, you know, taking it from other places where, where I shouldn't be taking it from in the first place. So I do try to be cognizant of what I'm taking and where I take it from. Some of it comes from hikes and adventures, other comes from the sidewalk or, you know, drainage ditches or... <clears throat> kind of anywhere. So, but for the pieces that I make, the plaster parts, I do make as much of that as I want because that feels like within my control, plaster I don't feel is all that, you know, earthly harmful. Um, so that feels like I just make those as much as I want. Sometimes I can predict what they're gonna look like and I try to chase a certain direction and other times it just doesn't happen and it's totally elusive and it's a surprise every time. So sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. And then those plates, sometimes I, I keep and carry those for years before they ever get their, their additional elements. So Emily, how exactly do you make a plaster monoplane? <laughs> um, it usually starts with some kind of tray of water that has some kind of aggregate or pigment or sometimes literal dirt, sometimes salt or Mm, inks, things like that, sprinkled into that water. And then when that slurry dries, whatever residue has settled on to the, to the bottom of that tray, you know, it's kind of like a, a dusty, dusty residue. And then the wet plaster goes down into that. And then almost like flipping a pancake, when the wet plaster pours into it, once it's set, then when I flip over to the other side, it has pulled up whatever residue has, <clears throat> has remained. Um, and then it's it's pretty permanently set within within that plaster. Sometimes they can smudge or buff off a little bit or that surface scratches, but they're pretty resilient in that aspect. And then like this one, I'll draw on top of them or sometimes scratch into it a little bit or add add other pigments on top. And do you, uh, someone's asking if do you use hydrocal and do you seal these? And if you seal them, what do you seal it with? I do use hydrocal or there's another version. I think Blix version of hydrocal, they call Densite, which I was using that for a while, but it is pretty hard stuff, except when those, when the little thin edges get so thin, those can chip easily, but otherwise, <coughs> excuse me, they're pretty durable. Um, I don't seal much because I don't, I've tried like painting on a PVA size or something like that. And I don't like how, how it leaves like a plasticky looking sealed off finish. So if I do anything, it's often like a spray on workable fixative, something like that. There's another question for you. You want to take a break and take a drink? I could switch to Brian for a while. 
Sure. Okay. Thanks. Right. You got to talk some more while Emily uh, recovers. So you went to the academy. What was that like in, in terms of your evolution to this? That's a great question. I when I when I went in, I had uh, I had been living in uh, Washington D.C. and going to the National Gallery a lot and seeing the work of uh, George Bellows and the Ashcan School. So I really liked the um, the way uh, they you know drawing with paint and uh, kind of like this. Uh, brusque way of making a painting. And um, I was all about, uh, all about, um, you know, uh, not, uh, I don't know, uh, non-abstract art. And um, then um, as uh, my uh, studies, uh, as I, you know, went through the drawing in the first couple of years and the drawing and the painting, and then uh, when I got into, see, I, I did a certificate. So then, the first two years are uh, cl classroom work, and then uh, I got a studio, a private studio, and started working. And um, my teachers kept saying, "Is like you just don't know how to put on paint, but well, you don't know what you're doing." <laughs> And so I said, well, I'm going to start focusing on that. And so it kind of turned into the abstract thing. And at the same time, I think that an abstract painting for me, um, I think sometimes an image, uh, uh, like a, a, a pictorial image, can uh, almost distract from what I'm trying to sense in a scene. And... Also, just from looking at a lot of paintings and looking at, just looking, um, it's not, what you see isn't what you're seeing, I guess. I, I, it's hard to describe for me. Anyway, this is how I've um, ended up trying to express myself is, is with, um, with these things. And, you know, start a painting, ha have an idea and start a painting and, kind of get a sense of where it draws me to as far as something that I experienced. Like this one, like the yellow one there, it's um, Cherborg. I call it, it's the title is Cherborg. And it just, I was painting on it and I just remembered being in that city when I was able to uh, travel uh, in, in Europe after my fourth year. And, um, it just kind of, it was a kind of a, I don't know. It, it's a it's a port city, and um, there there were these old fortifications from World War II around it, and from the eighteen um, hundreds, uh, from when the, you know to protect it from the English. I don't know all these things, and I really enjoyed my stay there, and. I just wanted to, I guess, spend more time thinking about it. And so this painting ended up from that. And um, this, the one next to it um, was a painting that um, um, I actually, is, it's actually developing, like that's, I'm calling that a study because I really want to do a larger a painting of it. And it was, I was doing some drawing and I kind of was testing different things out. And then I said, wow, that's really something I'd like to make a painting of it. And so then, um, and that was another like real fast painting that uh, um, just kind of happened. So. Thanks, Brian. Sure. Emily, there's a question in the chat for you from Kyoko Miyabi. You want to take a look at that? Yeah, asking about ethereal and celestial uh, sensibilities tied with mm, my tactile kind of making style. And I, I do agree, my making process is highly tactile and I like to be very physical with them. Um, and I think 
kind of the ethereal and celestial feelings that I appreciate. Um, I'm wanting wanting to hold those, so I want to I want to make them tactile, and I want to be able to you know hold something in my own hands and have it that I can that I can literally hold those things that are not to be held. Those big feelings of of sky and nighttime and those um, you know quiet expanses of fog that is just so massive and, and enveloping, but not to be held at all or has no timely permanence. And so I, I want to make the things that to me feel feel like that so so that I can hold them. And I think all of these pieces I do make because I want them and I want to have them in my studio. And I think I, I make my things because because I want them and I, I want to I want to hold those things myself. So I think I'm just kind of trying to make more concrete, permanent versions of those feelings. So have you always worked in a sculptural manner or have you evolved to this? Um, I would say my my life personality, even as a kid, has, has been sculptural and tactile and, you know, play, playing with items. Um, but I did start out school really wanting to paint and I came to PAFA because I wanted to be a good painter. Um, but first year of, of grad school wasn't going well for painting. Um, in, in between that first and second year is when I kind of picked up on that printmaking process. And then it kind of changed, changed a lot from there. But I would say that's maybe more truer to my, my own inherent mm, making tendencies. So now both of you, you work together in installation at school. And now like Emily, you work in installation at the ICA. Do you, do both of you feel that experience influences the kind of art you make? I think mine does only in terms of it's a very artistic community. All of my coworkers are art, artists and musicians. Um, it means I use a lot of tools and can use them pretty well. Um, it means, you know, a lot of materiality, but I don't think my, my work pulls its influence necessarily or its, its content from, from the actual work that I do. But it's just one more layer of, of a very physical lifestyle. Thank you. Brian, how about you? I, uh, my, uh, I think the, 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 it's, almost, it's parallel tracks. I know that as I was, when I was in school, um, cause I, cause I came, I came, I came before I was in school, I kind of started to really, I had this opportunity you know, in Washington, DC, there's all the, you know, the big museums and, and you can just walk in, you don't have to worry about memberships or paying and everything. And so I spent a lot of time looking at paintings and so not only that, but then I also got a good sense of what a gallery looks like and what's in the, you know, what's in the gallery and how's it, how is it arranged and et cetera. And it's almost, almost unconsciously, I think that as I was learning how to, uh, to, to draw and paint when I was in school, I realized that there was kind of this end this end result that I had experienced, you know, and then the, the, you know, the trips that in school, then there would be a series of trips to go to New York or down to DC and continue looking at art and going in, in PMA and going to PAFA. And uh, I was very fortunate that uh, I was able to kind of uh, um, weasel my way into uh, a job in the galleries at, um, at school and then had this amazing experience working with um, students in the student gallery and at the annual student exhibition and working with fantastic people like Emily. And it was all a very extremely positive thing. And then, um, then working with people like 
like uh, the, the teachers at school, like Bill Scott and um, Michael Gallagher and like how uh, exhibition is supposed to look and everything. And it just, um, and I think it affected my work. And uh, maybe it's sometime also detracted from my work because um, I like, I was really, I really liked, you know, working in galleries and put in arranging shows and, and so on. So um, I don't know. So the, the two things are, are, are interrelated, but I don't, I don't know exactly what that connection is. Again, though, it was like, as Emily said, it's like, it's, it's a, it's a lifestyle and it's a very, um, it's a very rewarding lifestyle. Um, um, I would agree with that. And I would also second, Brian, what you were saying about how that kind of lifestyle can be um, fully consuming at times. It feels like when installs are happening or organizing a show or <clears throat> whatever part of that, it really is all consuming. And then that often does make my, my, my art making go to the wayside until, until there's lighter, lighter times when, you know, I can make a little more time for my own my own brain and, and, and what I want. But I also really love it too. And I spent a lot of time working with Brian and loved that a lot. I think I spent more time with Brian at, at PAFA than with any of my critics or even at times in my own in my own studio. But I think that speaks a lot about the kind of people we are. And I think we're just probably naturally fit for that kind of a lifestyle. So how do you feel you fit together in this exhibition? Since it's outside of the work realm and into the art realm, are you surprised by it? I was initially um, when Brian, I guess Mike and Tina, you reached out first. And I, I wondered if you actually know what my work looks like. Because um, if you, you know, list the descriptors of my work and Brian's work, they don't sound similar. Um, they're not made similarly. They don't have even similar color palettes at times. And so I was a little surprised by it. But when we hung it, I thought it just looks really nice. And I was gladly surprised by that. I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> how, about, how about you, Brian? I uh, just, um, well, so so when uh, the the show was proposed the the paintings hadn't been made yet uh, a lot of them hadn't and um but somehow i felt that um um and i i didn't know what your what your current work was i remembered um a, a show i had seen um i think at the crane arts building of yours and um i remember the work from um the graduate exhibition, but I just had a sense that uh, that um, our sensibility our sensibilities would um, mesh, and um, I'm so yeah. Uh, again, I don't know. Like as Mike said, like boy, my this 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 palette that I'm that I, I, of these paintings is. Is pretty like it was. It was more my garish paintings. I still think that the work would somehow go together because um, uh, with my paintings, there's there's a. I'm I'm trying to like with the shapes. There's a certain harmony or rhythm or um, that I'm trying to achieve and a balance, I guess, that I'm trying to achieve. That sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, and that and then that's the same thing. The balance of your work, the but it's it's more physical instead of being two dimensional. It's it's three dimensional. But it's it's just amazing how like oh this is going to go over here. Oh add this here and I don't know. I just which is exactly how like when I'm when the painting is developing. That's the same thing I'm doing is like oh you know oh there's this whole big uh, thing. Oh, I needs a you know. Just like a painter does, oh, I need a dark spot here. I need a, a white here. I need kind of a shadow here, and and so I, I think we're thinking along the same lines. And so I think that the 
I think that the I think the work really meshes well together. I think so too. And do you also think are you kind of using um, especially those landscape or atmosphere situation ones? Do you feel like they're kind of moods or personalities too? It feels to me like they're they're a presence. They capture a kind of a kind of a presence, a feeling of of familiarity and being in a certain place. The, the, I I definitely want it to be. I'm hoping to take. Well, everyone has their own experiences, but I'm I'm like when I look at someone else's work. The 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 best experience is when it's taking me someplace that I that I'm familiar with that I'm familiar with or that I want to be that I don't that I don't know about. like it's new and familiar at the same time, and so that's what I'm hoping. Like in all these countless walks down this road by the by the golf course, you know, I've seen I you know every day I was like seeing the same thing, and it kind of gets in your brain. But yet, when you go to paint it or paint about it, it's like all those experiences all in one concentrated thing. Boy, I'm I'm just rambling. I don't know, but anyway, that's that's what. Uh, I want it to be specific, yes. I want it to take people to take it someplace that they've experienced or something. So Emily, you know, painting can be like somewhat spontaneous and changeable on the fly, like in the middle. Things can be reworked and, but with your work, um, I mean, do you, plan it out carefully in advance or do you make decisions in the process of making um it, it's very process oriented even doing that plaster plaster making thing some of it i can kind of control and predict a lot of it is um spontaneous i i kind of fell into making that process um just by spontaneously you know dumping plaster in in a charcoal drawing things like that um, and even making those assemblages is very, very organic and process oriented too, where sometimes in my studio, I'm just shuffling things and making comparisons or stacking things up, take it down, put a rock here, you know, pushing, pushing those little lichens and sticks around. So a lot of it is, it is very tactile. My, my nature is, is to be handsy about it all and touch everything that I want because it's mine and I can at this point, you know, um, so sometimes it takes a long time before something clicks and then then it becomes permanent. Even even the things that seem permanent are not entirely. I, I rework a lot of things or, you know, once it goes to a show and it comes back to me, then sometimes I take it apart and the pieces assemble in a different way or I'll rework a surface of something. Um, so they, they feel kind of organic and and transitory in their own right. They don't feel totally, totally cemented forever. So is drawing a part of your process either before or during, or do you start immediately with materials? Uh, pretty immediately with materials. I feel like the things I do are large swaths of color or texture, but to do something with a pen or pencil, a line that's, you know, dedicated and committed to it i'm not committed i'm not committed to making a mark or a line so everything is like big big surface areas of but those surfaces that i'm wanting to um you know pick up the tone or the mood of a of a situation or they feel like earthy mineral crusts or or murky water sometimes or you know flickering light in, in a way so so none of those things to me are something that can be pinpointed with a, you know, a drawn material. Even when I used to make paintings, they were very atmospheric and foggy and about, about light, skyscape, clouds. Thank you. So Brian, how about you? Do you is drawing a component here at all? Like before, during, after? Um, 
it, it, drawings uh, very important, but I don't know if uh, uh, I, I really can't draw, but um, a sense of um, it, it was interesting when you were as, talking to Emily about like um, and th this is sometimes I forget, so, sometimes I forget this about painting is like you can always change it right and and um, <clears throat> uh, yeah scrape it off start scrape it off yeah scrape it off sand mm -hmm. it off and 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 redo it if it's if it doesn't quite look right and so in the 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 drawing is it's like maybe it's more when I was in high school I took mechanical drawing you know working with the uh, uh you know uh, the triangles and the and the and the um t t square and things and I and so that's kind of the drawing that is important um because it kind of starts out with with the color and trying to get the color moving on the canvas a certain way but then uh the the drawing comes in is trying to refine it and to get a image that's pleasing that like i said has the harmonies or the rhythms um that, or the, that i'm looking that i'm trying to trying to achieve so um yeah so i i i do like i i consider i consider drawing a very uh satisfying and important part of the process of making the paintings thank you and i bow i always bow <laughs> actually you know that was one of the things i've been doing is walking around which is something i was really bad about doing before uh when I was in Philadelphia, walking around with a sketchbook and stopping and trying to make a sketch. And so um, that's, I, I spent the summer trying to um, just refine those skills of trying to get something that I'm seeing down on a, on a thing. So that's something I would like to continue doing. I find that satisfying. And I think that shows up like in the paintings in a in a other way of just being comfortable and and confident enough in in how you put down a line and and draw a shape so there's a question in the chat for you brian the t-square triangle perhaps is where you felt at home i i i guess yeah um Yeah, I don't know. It's it's always a way of um, like even like I always had a bad a bad habit of um, you know when I wanted to plan a show in a gallery or something. Well, first I have to draw the gallery on a piece of paper. You know, it's always it's like a it's like a way of of approaching a problem, trying to solve a problem, and making it like becoming really film familiar with every every uh, you know however many square uh, you know feet and inches a, a, a wall is or the area of a floor and so it's something that I bring back I guess it's just a habit of trying to become familiar and um, uh, comfortable and and I don't want to say ownership but it's it's a process that I do feel at home that I can Yes, that I can, um, yeah. So do, are there any last questions for the artists before we close out from the audience? Oh, Brian, there's one for you there. You see it in the chat? But your uh, paint application seems thicker, weightier than your previous work. Yeah, it's actually like the thicker the painting, the faster it goes. <laughs> um, uh, 
because I, because like on on some of the more labored paintings, I've uh, I end up kind of sanding them down and smoothing them out, and then and then you know trying to draw and find things, and then the 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 ones that go fast. Um, um, yeah, it's more of like a palette knife painting, you know, that, um, which is, I, which I really find rewarding and a lot of fun. And, um, often they, they, they don't end up, uh, yeah, I, I, it, it's just, they kind of, you lose control of them. And like these two, I was actually able to kind of, um, get to what I'm doing. So, so yes, it's kind of like the thicker the paint, the faster the painting goes for me, because otherwise I'm like laboring over it and sanding it and, and doing the glazes and, and fussing over it. So it's kind of opposite. Weird, huh? <laughs> well, that's art for you. AI won't replace it. <laughs> yeah. So good, no. <sighs> so do you, Brian, Emily, do you have any questions for each other or? Yeah, I do for Brian. Mm -hmm. um, I've been thinking about imagining you in your studio making your pieces. Um, and I wonder how that studio time feels for you. Does it feel cathartic and does it feel like, like a comfortable place for you? Or is it, does it feel laborious? Does it feel like work to you? What, what does your, what does making a painting feel like for you? Um, uh, lately, uh, it always seems yeah. like. Um, well, when I when I was in Philadelphia, it was like uh, Sunday. I was a Sunday painter, and so I had all day Sunday and and. Um, whether I got a late start, usually I got a late start and then I would kind of work for a number of hours. And like, that was my focus was just, well, I'm painting today and things. And, um, here, um, the, the day, like I'm kind of always have to kind of know what's happening in the house, um, in case somebody needs me to do something. And uh, um, it's kind of hard to find, uh, like the, yeah, I don't know. It, it doesn't seem like I have the the time to kind of, um, you know, go beyond one or two moves that I kind of had anticipated when I started. It, I don't know. Like so, it's. Um, um, but it's very satisfying when I am painting. So like, and that's always been like before and now. Um, so yeah, it's like, I don't, what's changed I think is it's just a little bit, there's just small, shorter increments of time I have to focus on things. Cause I'm kind of having to be aware of getting, you know, getting supper on the table or getting the laundry out of the dryer or something like that. Which is just life, you know. So. And Emily, um, the, uh, I, it's, it's interesting how that like, like these things are so tactile and you said that like these are things that you want to hold and then I got I see them and like but then they have these little pointy things maybe they don't look as dangerous as they look on an image <laughs> but they must be fun they must be fun to hold I guess um, and and to get that feeling from them I guess. I think so. I'm not shy about touching them or breaking them. Um, when, you know, when I make one of those plates and it doesn't have any sparkle or magic to it, I'm fine with breaking it to see how thick they are, how strong they are, um, what it feels uh -huh. like. Or if, if I glue something together, I'll 
pry as hard as I can on it to see, see how that's working. So I don't feel so precious about some of those things. Um, but yeah, even, even that, that spiky one there, it's, um, it's cactus spines and I plucked those cactus spines out of Texas and brought them home with me. So even, even if it looks ferocious, it's still tactile too. I, you know, I want to see what those cactus spines feel like. I want to break all those little sticks into little two centimeter pieces. Um, it, tactility. Yeah. Yeah. is a thing. Even, even though they are, they are fragile in a way. Their surfaces can can be fragile. Packing them can is is a, a challenge for sure. But if they break, that's part of their nature too. I think you know that's a part of natural nature. Um, right. They don't have to last forever. And and I made it, so if if I break it, that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's spoken like a true preparator. <laughs> <laughs> only my studio not other people's work <laughs> only mine. yeah but you know you're always you're you're always able to come up with a plan to like rectify a situation right so. well thank you brian and emily thank um, you michael thank you tina thank you everybody so we'll uh Good to see guess we'll call it here and thanks everyone for coming. Hope you have a great night. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Thank you.